Hello everyone, Allie here. All right, so I've got another Skyweaver deck guide and gameplay video for you today. Uh, this particular deck is a Titus control deck that I've been playing and having a lot of fun with. So I'll tell you a little bit about the game plan and then we'll get stuck into some games. All right, so the overall win condition and game plan of the deck is to accelerate the game to get to the end game to drop some of the most powerful and strongest units that the game has to offer. It plays similarly to the you know classic control style. So so you've got AOE, single target removal, utility cards, uh, and of course your ramp and then your powerful units that you drop um, to hopefully blow your opponent out. Let's talk about each of those categories of cards that make up the deck and talk about the nuances within each. And we'll start out with ramp because ramp is definitely the best way to accelerate the game to get to the end game and drop your most powerful threats. So that's definitely what you want to be doing starting out. So if given the option to you know clear an early menu with single target removal or to ramp, most of the time you're going to want to choose to ramp unless it's absolutely necessary to answer a threat. Your core ramp cards in this deck are Stoke, Orchid, Gigabloom, and Gift of Aya. So Stoke is both players gain one max mana and draw a card, give both heroes plus three health. Stoke is absolutely fantastic in this deck because it just gets things going uh, for cheap right away. And even though you are giving your opponent a mana as well, it generally doesn't matter because your deck will scale to more powerful things, hopefully. Uh, so giving them the opportunity um, to ramp as well doesn't impact you as much. And sometimes if you're facing an aggressive player with the extra mana, they'll commit more to an early board and then one of your AOE cards can really uh, wipe them out. Orchid is also incredible for the early game. Uh, three mana give units in your hand plus one plus one and spells minus one cost and then gain one mana the next turn. So the cool thing with Orchid is that if you also have a Giga Bloom in your hand and its uh, cost got reduced from uh, or the Orchid's ability here, you'll be able to cast this on three and you'll gain an extra mana the following turn and you'd be able to Giga Bloom for five. So that's probably, you know, the dream sequence of events there because, you know, if you, the sooner you can get the Giga Bloom out, the better off your game plan is going to be. And this deck has some really incredible comeback mechanics. So if you spend those early turns, you know, giving up tempo because you're uh, ramping, there's AOE, there's heal, there's definitely some survivability to recover from those slower ramping turns. Now let's get into some of the single target removals. So your single target removals are Eradicate, Sunder, Ether Lemur, Judgment, Unstoppable Chop, and Crocus Pocus. So your best early game removal, single target removal is Eradicate, Ether Lemur, and Sunder. Ether Lemur is a particularly powerful card in this deck because it is both, um, or it can be both used as removal and card generation. You do, of course, need a uh, unit in hand, or sorry, a card in hand that costs seven or more to activate the effects here, but most of the time that isn't too difficult because your deck plays um, a decent amount of expensive cards. So it's not too hard to get uh, his abilities activated. And if you do use him for early removal for a minion on board, sometimes he even sticks around, which is pretty clutch as well. Eradicate, Crocus Pocus, and Unstoppable Chop all dust cards instead of killing them. So these can be particularly important used at the right time. It can make or break the game because you might not want to enable a really nasty graveyard effect or maybe there's a death effect. So you know, using these wisely to just remove certain cards from the game uh, could really make or break your match. Now moving on to the AOE cards of this deck, which are Swipe, Volcanic Blast, Overdraft, Burninate, Cause Wrath, Montaneous, and Titanic. Swipe and Volcanic Blast here are definitely great for getting through the early game. Sometimes it's better to just use them right away to save some HP, and then other times you want to try and get as much damage out of them as possible uh, by being a little bit greedier. Another really cool thing about Volcanic Blast is that it attaches flames to everything. So that can be very useful 
in getting rid of some negative enchants on your own minions. So say for instance you ether whale and you summon a couple of big threats and because they uh, have roots on them your op opponent sort of ignores them and builds up their own uh, board as well. Well if I cast volcanic blast I would get rid of my roots, um, you know, be able to get through uh, some of their threats and then be able to attack with my minions and the another caveat is that the flames cost two roots cost three so it's even cheaper to remove um, the negative enchants from your own minions as well keep in mind of course though that you do need a fire card in your hand to enable the flame effect overdraft is definitely one of the best early game cards and it is it's so flexible so i almost always keep it if given the chance it can get through armored units which is uh definitely one of the most useful things so uh definitely one of your best cards burninate and cause wrath also incredibly uh good aoe's but they, of course they're a bit more expensive uh so sometimes you know a cause wrath isn't a full clear but it has the wither effect so it can definitely bring the power level of the board down and it does heal you up a little bit when it hits the enemy hero multaneous is definitely higher risk because it is a unit so it could be silenced or dusted uh, but sometimes it comes off of an ether whale and is really good at reducing pressure um, due to the guard and massive aoe on death and your last one here titanic is a pretty interesting one when you get a chance to play it from hand it can often clear really difficult boards that your spells cannot because a lot of your AoE and single target removal in this deck is damage based so if for example cause wrath only does three damage to the board uh, and to the hero so Titanic can do a really good job at clearing those medium to large sized units now let's talk about some of the utility cards in this deck and those cards I would consider flame sword tune up Lotus Reflection, Guru, and the Genesis Avatar. Starting out with Flame Sword over here, it doesn't look like much, but the lifesteal aspect of this card is so clutch uh, because oftentimes you find yourself pretty low health uh, if you spent the beginning of the game just giving up tempo to, to ramp uh, to get to your higher plays or better plays than the late game. So Flame Sword has saved me many times by you know just putting it on virtually any of your minions because they're all pretty high statted except for maybe the ether lemur uh, that would be the outlier if you can connect the flame sword to your opponent's face uh, most of the time that can help you stabilize and uh, win the late game genesis avatar is definitely a late game threat for some matchups but i also am putting it into this utility category because the death effect can be a resource generation powerhouse so it reads once per game adjust this unit to return your top highest cost dead card of each element to deck with uh, minus two cost so it can be very clutch in these long control matchups where you really need to generate a lot of resources to get you know more of them back into your deck so sometimes you don't want to cast this until you've gotten you know your at least a decent amount of uh, threats from each element to get shuffled back in and that can really help seal the deal for the game because oftentimes your opponent will have a difficult time answering your threats, laying them down one by one the first time. So if you can get this off a second time, it often can close out the game. Another really useful card is Tune Up. Uh, it almost always draws you two cards as you run so many high costed things. So it gives you nice card advantage. Um, it could also help you find a fire cards for like a, a flame sword or something like that to help trigger uh, your burn like volcanic blast it is a metal card so it can add it towards your draco mantium's um, need for metal cards in the graveyard to give your hero armor and it can even in the late game you know potentially draw a five or six costed card that has been reduced by the genesis avatar so it can be very useful in many different ways all right the next card that we're going to talk about in terms of utility is guru and i decided to put a uh, guru in the utility category here as opposed to a threat because Guru is not really, you know, a big costed unit that you want to grab off of an ether whale. It's got an incredible uh, attached spell, the wind weave that mulligans your hand and 
combined with its passive uh, makes everything uh, cheaper, spells cheaper by one cost. Well, I suppose if they're uh, two costs, they're higher. So it can give you card advantage. It can be really good against, you know, aggro as a mid game threat that people kind of feel like they need to deal with because the risk of you casting the spell and the passive existing is uh, just threatening. So, you know, the Guru is kind of a per game basis on how you want to use this card. You might just want to tempo it out. Or if you've got a really bad hand and you really want to save save it for being able to cast the spell, uh, the Wind Weave, you need to kind of decide, you know, what's best. So I've personally found it very useful uh, in this deck. All right, now let's talk about some of the end game threats that this deck has to offer. Uh, that would be the Fat Cat Banker, Libra, Amaruath, Draco Mantium, and the BFR 9. Thousand one. So these are in addition to some of the previously mentioned threats uh, in this deck. And, you know, many times you're going to be pulling them or, you know, you should be trying to pull them off of the ether whale. One either summoned from an ether whale summoned from a uh, lemur or the one that's just hard cast in the deck and, you know, trying to take board with these enormous units. Starting out with Libra, it is an absolute lifesaver against aggressive decks. I'm always looking to cast this because I'm usually quite low on health if I'm getting smacked down by my opponent. And because it is a summon ability, it also casts uh, the health off of the Aether Whale, as long as you're... Um, lower health than your opponent of course next we've got the fat cat banker and honestly sometimes the banker here can just run away with the game on its own if it's left unanswered it's going to give you uh, either card advantage or a board full of three threes so fat cat banker is amazing and the bfr is probably one of the best units to get pulled out of the ether whale because it can answer a threat with its dash ability if you can unroots it so remember that ether whale attached roots meaning that your units can't attach unless it's an earth unit so bfr is metal so you'll need to pay the three mana to unroots him to uh, attack into a particular unit but you know when you pull this out it's summon and it's glory effect is to buff the board and also the hand so this is definitely um an amazing one to pull and to try and end the game with Draco mantium Maltinius, amorath Amorath, Genesis Avatar, and the Meng Long all have guard. So, you know, you pretty much, um, or most of the time, have a about a 50% chance to pull out a minion with guard from the Aether Whale, which can really be important in keeping you alive. Uh, but remember, you know, towards the end of the game, you will have a better idea of what you're likely to pull, and you can always just look at what's left in your deck to try and, you know, know your outs. When playing out your threats, normally there's only three cards that I want to bring your specific attention to. And the first one is Dracomantium. So Dracomantium's death ability is dust your top three dead metal cards and give your hero armor. So it is really nice for your hero to have armor, uh, but you have to pay attention to the amount of metal cards in your graveyard. But the interesting about, thing about Dracomantium is that it does cast itself and the attached spell casting chrome also is a metal card so you can you know play it on nine cast the casting chrome for uh, zero mana even if it doesn't do anything that will be the second and then if draco man team were to die that would be the third so if you're really looking to you know get that armor know that it is possible just with one metal card like a uh, tune-up or something and just the Dracomantium on the board um, at one time. Next is the Genesis Avatar, which I already spoke about a little bit earlier, so I'll go through it quickly. But again, it is one of the strongest things in the slower, grindy value matchups. If you can get a few cards of each element that are really strong um, to you know, re-get them from the death ability here, it is really important for those games. Um, so much to the point where, you know, I might play this and use Judgment or one of my other kill spells uh, to kill it right away to guarantee its death effect so that it doesn't get dusted or silenced. That's probably a fringe case and I wouldn't do that all that often, but if I knew I was playing, you know, a control uh, mirror or something like that, I would definitely 
you know, try to kill this uh, myself to guarantee the extra value. The last threat here that we need to talk about is Meng Long, which has become one of my favorite cards, probably because it's a dragon, shocker, but Meng Long is a super flexible card and can be used in many different ways. Um, it can be just used as a threat in the mid game or just some survivability as it is one of the units that has guard. And one of the interesting things about this card is its attached spell, the dream gate, which readies a unit, meaning it gets rid of the summoning sickness. So it can attack uh, the turn that you play it. And then the secondary part of the dream gate is that it attached the lowest cost spell of that particular element and attaches it again to the Menglong. So if you're using it on itself, it'll either pull the Eldritch Lore or the card that mulligans your hand, can't remember the name right now, but you know that can be useful as you know to finding some better cards or something like that. There are instances in which you can use the Dream Gate on a different minion, uh, not itself, and then it would find a lowest cost and spell and attach it to that unit of that particular element. So are there, are there some like crazy things that you can do with Meng Long? Another thing that I've often find myself doing is healing up with the flame sword, playing the Meng Long for like three, four, or five when it's been reduced, readying it and then attaching flame sword and it's saving me to heal up a bit. So it's a very interesting card. There's lots of different ways that you can do or use it. Uh, it's challenging and it's fun to fi find the best path to use Menglong, but it is uh, a super nice card and late game threat in this deck. All right, so I think we are good on going over the nuances of each card and how they play out in the games. Uh, in terms of the mulligan, I will always keep anything that ramps me. So Stoke, Orchid, Gift of Aya, Giga Bloom. I'm always going to be keeping those in my opener. And probably, you know, removal and AoE just to, you know, control the early game, make sure you don't die. So something like Overdraft, I will always keep. Probably a Volcanic Blast, a single target mover like Sunder or Eradicate. I'm probably keeping a lot of the time. I think I'd always keep Ether Lemur because even if you don't have, you know, a seven cost or higher to trigger it, you'll always find it most of the time because there are so many high costed things in this deck. So that's the general idea, but you know, every situation is different and you'll just use your best judgment on how you think your opponent is going to play. If you made it this far, and I hope you uh, enjoyed my guide for this deck, I've been having a great time with it, and now enjoy some games, and if you would consider subscribing to my new channel, I'd really appreciate it. I am loving Skyweaver and plan to make more videos, so let me know what you thought of the video, give it a thumbs up, and thanks again for watching. I guess that's the downside of like having a giant boba, is that boba tea, is that you, it's making me pee. <laughs> Sorry for the TMI. Uh, okay, so, this deck for Hearthstone people that are watching, it kind of is like, it's basically like a ramp druid, right? You've got like a nourish card that gives you like two empty mana crystals, and then you wind up playing big chonky minions like this thing, Ether Whale, summons two units from your deck, and you're usually just playing big units. So then it's got some AoE. You've never seen this game before. Ah, well, I encourage you to watch it for a minute and see how, see how you feel. Sometimes I like keeping a seven just because certain cards are triggered by if you have a card that costs seven or higher in your hand. So, Evan, have you ever played Gwent? You know, I actually have never played Gwent before. When Gwent came out, I was still fairly new to Hearthstone. Not fairly new, but I was only a couple years in and that like my, stream was starting to grow more and I felt like if I spent time away from Hearthstone it would have like hindered my growth in Hearthstone so I didn't really get into Gwent when it was super popular. <clears throat> oh my god this thing's smacking me bruh. Okay so we could draw a card we, this is a mana crystal we could ramp this out and then next turn we would have two mana so on four we'd have six mana next turn. We also could just kill this thing right now with this because I do have a fire spell in my hand. So it'll do four, deal two, and then it'll attach flames to it. That feels like not so great though. But if I could get more value out of using this because it's an AOE card, all right, F it, let's just do this. Okay, so your hero is actually on the battlefield in Skyweaver, right? 
costs uh, two, and this also and this costs three. So this destroys your lowest cost unit. So it would kill. It would, like you can hover and hover over and see what it would kill. I think we have to do this. This kind of works out though. It's fine. So in Skyweaver there are attached spells. So that. The second part of this spell was um, if your hand has a fire card, attach flames to units. So this is uh, the attached spell of flames. And the sunrise effect triggers at the start of the turn. So at the start of the turn, it'll do two damage to the enchanted character. Sucks to kind of float the mana, but I think we have to answer the threat because we are kind of dying. Do you get all of the cards in the game or is it like Hearthstone? Uh, you can earn all of the cards in the game by playing. So you um they're pretty generous with the cards that you get just after you do the tutorial and everything and i saw someone's post about it and you can get pretty much the full collection of cards within like a few months so the economical factor of the game is pretty darn good uh okay this is a gain one max mana heal i think we just go for this is this an ad? This is not an ad. No, this is not sponsored. This is me just liking the game. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> this costs three, this costs five. This thing is gonna kill me. Like I could go for this, two damage to everything, but this thing's death rattle is um, deal six. I could just play the fat cat. This thing, when they uh, play a card, we either draw a card, or if we have a full hand, it summons three threes instead. I could do this and kill that, and then next turn I could attempt to dust this, which removes it from the game so it doesn't trigger its death rattle, and its death rattle is the thing that's gonna hit me for six. I think I'm just gonna play the fat cat, but we are definitely scared. This thing gives life steal, so, oh my god. Okay, well, it's sort of okay because now we get to play Cause Wrath, which will heal us a little bit and it'll also dust both the dust. So you can see the symbol. So one also really great thing about Skyweaver is it tells you, like if you hover the card, it'll show you what it's doing to everything. So the little dust symbol um, removes it from the game instead of uh, having it die. So it won't go into the graveyard, meaning the death rattle didn't trigger. It is free to play, yes. It is, and you can, as long as you play, you can um, get every card in the collection. Ooh, yes! Okay, okay, okay. So we can go here. Uh, has minus one cost for each element among other cards in your hand. So we can play the Menglong. We can ready the Menglong. Uh, like, get rid of its summoning sickness. Give it life steal. And bop face and heal for nine. Let's go. <laughs> Still might lose, but you know. Life steal only triggers when you hit face. So see how it didn't uh, heal up when the minion hit in, but it did with a. Uh, so we don't have lethal, still deal three to the face, but we can just ether whale, pull out um, large minions. <clears throat> Stoke, I don't even think we need to play that. This is really good in the beginning. It ramps you an empty mana crystal, draws a card and um, gives both heroes three health and it does the same for our opponent. So I think just giving our car opponent extra cards right now is not worth. <clears throat> Damn. Well, we can just pay this, pay this, and go here. This will deal four. Well, I guess we, it doesn't matter, Ali, just decide, just kill him. <laughs> no reason to think about it. Okay, we won. We, um, that Menlong uh, top deck was, was super clutch. Okay, we got the lemur, let's go. But we don't have, oh, we have Gigabloom as well and the gift. But if we're keeping the lemur, we kind of want to keep something big. We could just keep the lemur and then find it. Not really keeping... Okay, we're just going to do this.
Gift of Aya, yes. Gift of Aya. Uh, hold on, let me put this in a notepad so I do not uh, forget one second. Next turn we could go for the Lotus. Do we want to bop it? Sure. Double coin into Lotus. Yeah, I mean, I could double coin into Lotus to get two extra mana next turn, meaning I could do this and then into this. I, I was just gonna um, wait on it to go for the Giga Bloom, but I mean, I would, I would want to cast the gift as well. This is a really cool card. Please tell me the extension is working. Mm -hmm. This thing is taking, taking a lot of damage here, but we've got two of these, which is cool. Also gonna heal up here. Should we bop? Probably not. Yeah, I don't know. Do we, are we sure we like that better than going for the, the Lotus the following turn to get the Giga Bloom out earlier? I mean, I guess I can like do a clear turn. I can get the le lemur down or do this, and then we go into Giga Bloom. What's the portal to the void under your mic? The portal to the void under my mic. I'm thinking Giga Bloom would have been better ramp. Yeah, that's why I was like a little bit hesitant actually on the going for the gift, but ooh. Was there just, I mean, it's probably just green screen distortion. And I can do that. This doesn't have armor, and then we can bop that down. Yeah, I actually think this kind of worked out, because then we got the gift going. And, um... And we answered a little bit of the threats there. Allie's turning into a ghost. It's just the green screen. It gets a little wonky at night. <laughs> When conquest, I'm not, I told you, I, I'm not ready. I tried it out and won one game, okay? And I don't even know how that, that happened. What do you say is the most popular mode for streamers? Like, do a, most streamers play conquest or they play ladder? Like, I actually don't, I don't know. I haven't really watched enough streams. Okay, so would chains work, or sorry, overdraft work against Shroud. It's only lead that wouldn't be able to get it, right? Conquest is more popular. I mean, I can see why. I mean, Conquest is kind of exhilarating, right? Dun, dun. Oh my god. Okay, well, at least we have two Ether Whales. Okay. Chomp's a little sad that we can't answer that. But Ether Whale and the Ether Whale seems pretty strong. I don't really want it to pull the Genesis Avatar before we can put some things in it, but I suppose we won't be greedy. What happened to Hearthstone? Uh, we decided to play something else for a little while. Okay, so this answers that. This game is sick, actually. I'm glad you think so. I really, like, genuinely think it's a great game, and um, it's nice to hear the feedback that you agree. Okay, so this does four damage to everything, so we can just do that. And then unroots our unit and smack them. What's another play? Honestly, I just like that play, I think. However, it does do four to my own. Um, yeah, that's fine. Will the new YouTube channel get more videos? Yes, it will. I'm, I'm in the process of like writing and recording a guide for this one. I'm still, you know, getting, I've been playing it on, um, you know, off stream, but need to still get a little bit more proficient with it and get some games. And then I've got another one that's a mid-range deck that I played last time that should be coming out soon. So yes, thank you for asking about it. And yeah, if you do want more Skyweaver content, um, the new YouTube channel is 
in the link right there. Okay, so they have their own fat cat. You could just Titanic, bop it, go face. Could also ether whale. I don't have enough to unroots. 9, 10, 11, 12. Like if I were to pull out the rush or the dash minion here, I can't pay for the three mana to get rid of the roots. I say we just play the big guy. It's a little sketch could this could answer like a much bigger board, but I don't know. We've got so much pressure going on. I feel like they're just on the back foot now. Is your cat similar to the one on board? Um Oh. See, I feel like that was a bit of a preemptive GG. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. 11. How do I have lethal here? Oh, well, I have lethal that way. I can just uh, trade here. 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 like some things can go awry if you're just like respond I mean they said GG first but uh, keep this got the guru is pretty sweet I love playing it all right we'll just do it here part of me feels like I just keeping an ether whale is solid though because it's like your best play once you actually get to it right it matches up players that are at the same round by the way your mic is buzzing when you talk okay thank you for letting me know I'll have to play it back. No one didn't hear any buzzing. No one said that to me today, so you're the first person that said that. Um, hmm. Buzzing with <laughs> Uh, Orchid, I guess we should cast that, huh? Yeah, so this thing's got armor. Oh, another favorite thing about Skyweaver is they make things very easy to tell, like, what has what. So, like, when it's going pink and black, it's got wither. This symbol with a blue around it means armor. That are, it's very nice, very nice. Okay, this costs two, and this costs one. So this would kill the one cost. Uh, we're just gonna keep ramping. It's very subtle. It, it's, def it's subtle, but enough to, like, know what's going on. <laughs> so I could silence this so they don't draw a dark and a light card. It'll stop their draw. That seems pretty dece. And then we can coin out a seven next turn. Okay, so example here, these have combat shield, but not um, spell shield. So I think this is probably worth a cause wrath, no? Pretty dece, all right, I'm out. Pretty dece. What? What's wrong with saying that? I am who I am. Don't make fun of my language, please. Thank you. I'm just all don't mind me. <laughs> oh my god, they passed. That's awesome. I think I like the fat cat. Gets us more options with more cards. Seems good. Oh no, she fixed it 100% after fiddled at something. I added the gate higher just by like two points, so maybe that helped it a little bit. Oh man, they dusted it. Sad times. I thought you were gonna die with that board clear. Yeah, Cause Wrath is pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. What is this thing? Your hero has wither. And what's this? Attach chains to a target. Deal one damage to enemies. So wither is going to make our stuff smaller in stats. I wouldn't mind playing this plus the three mana spell next turn. Could just kill this now. I think we could just drop the big guy. It's going to get reduced, but I think that's okay. Like it's uh, attack. And then yeah, I, I'm sorry if I is Skyweaver people are watching this and I'm repeating myself, but I would imagine that a significant portion of people are new and learning, so I'm gonna repeat myself. But yeah, you can hit D for deck, built-in deck tracker. So cool, right? 
And then you can also hit G for graveyard. And it tells you what's in your graveyard. Woo! Uh, okay, so we could Guru and then cast the Wind Weave, which mulligans your hand um, and makes everything cheaper and draws two cards. But not playing Ether Whale when I have the chance just kind of seems bad. So I think I'm gonna go with the Ether Whale and then maybe next turn we can do the Guru. Hearthstone in 2022, you guys have a keyboard. I know, hotkeys for a card game, imagine. Also, another thing is cool is when you hit the graveyard, this um, tells you what of each element or type of card is in your graveyard. So um, this card reads, dust your top three dead metal cards to give your hero armor. And you, this is the symbol for metal right here. So unfortunately we don't have any metal cards. Um, so we won't get the death rattle, but it's fine. Interesting. So we could play this and try and protect this if we wanted. I don't know how good that is though. Hmm. Could also just eradicate this thing. I sort of like the guru. Is it worth trying to protect this thing, you know? Because I could buff it up, it would go to three health and make this trade and go here. You know, I guess I kinda like it, sorta. Sorry, it would go to two, not uh, three. But then I really want to do the Guru, I think. Honestly, casting this would be nice as well. Like, what if we get a... Oh, the Ether Whale was actually for the one from our deck, because we haven't played the Lemur yet. Got so used to pressing D in Skyweaver that I'm attempting it in other games. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I know. The, the built-in deck tracker is pretty cool. So this is lowest cost units. This would kill all of these things. We take one damage, we don't really care. But that means that I'd get to pump face here. Actually, how much damage is this? 7, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's no guaranteed lethal, right? Maybe I Lotus first. Actually, I could do this. Uh, well, how much does the thing cost? A hoplite. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, god damn it. Uh, actually, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Do this. Wait, why did that not cost them? Um, it's, it's okay. Six. I mean, we're gonna win. It's not really... Wait, why did the- I thought the hoplite cost, uh, one. No- oh, the zomboids cost zero. My bad, my bad. But I wanted to answer the thing anyway, so it's okay. Um, we have 12 mana. We could Lotus Reflection. See what we get. Could also just play the guru and do the thing. Doom Shroom rocks. I love the Doom Shroom. Kill first. Yeah, I'll kill it first. I'm just deciding which one I want to do. It's probably just better to do the guru, right? Get a lot more cards to our hand. That'll deal two damage there. We can play this. Next turn, we can ready the Menglong and pop as long as there's not a taunt in the way. That's nine mana to do that play. Okay, cool. Um, 